Hi everybody, I hope you're all well. My name is Mike Armager. I um, do lots of different things across both education and mental health settings. Um, but I'm going to talk to you today about one of my other roles as, as a foster care and somebody supporting um, care experienced children, uh, both at home and in education and the health settings too. The first thing to say is that um, the structure of this is going to last about 10 minutes. Um, if that's too much right now and that you've got other things going on, maybe come back to this at a later date. Um, so the, the whole time with will go across about 10 minutes, but I'm going to share with you some practical resources and I'm going to share them on screen so you can see them and then include them in the after notes as well. So it will be me elaborating on those resources, but also I'm hoping that there'll also be some practical things for you to take away with you as well. First thing is I hope you're all okay. Um, it's a, a very difficult and, and challenging time for uh, both adults and young people at the moment, but especially I think for those who our care experience. Maybe some of you have two or three children in the house um, at the moment, um, but all day, every day, and, and that can be particularly challenging. Some of you may have children that are still also going into school environments as well, um, and that also presents significant challenges with various different routines and also just the lack of certainty around people at the moment. So know that what you're experiencing, if you are experiencing any elements of anxiety or any elements of just been quite stressed and understand that it, it's actually very normal um, in relation to what we're experiencing for you to be experiencing that right now. Um, much of what we're seeing in society at the moment is very understandable reactions to a very uh, strange and, and somewhat unique circumstance. So just, just be reassured that there are many people who are feeling very similar ways to you. The first thing I want to talk to you about um, in particular is, um, and I'm going to visit three things, throughout the 10 minutes that I'm talking to you. The three things we're going to uh, visit are hygiene anxiety. I'm going to talk to you about some anxiety cycles. And I'm also then going to talk to you about a resource that we've just launched um, that gives you some ideas about how to ground, how to regulate, um, and, and, and a practical resource that you can take from that too. So I'm going to show you about three documents. I'm going to show you them on screen and then elaborate with them as well. Okay, so it will be a combination of me talking about the resource and then obviously you seeing it. And don't forget, I'll also include them in your notes as well in the links to those two. So don't worry if you don't necessarily catch all the information on screen whilst I'm talking, those will be followed up in, your after, um, in, in the after webinar notes too. So the first thing I'm going to do, if you just bear with me a second just whilst I share the screen, the first thing I'm going to share with you is the hygiene anxiety. So this is something that I've just put together. You'll notice in this something very funny. My name's actually um, Mike Arminger, um, but this is, um, you'll see here that it's got Mike Arminger, or Mike Arminger, um, if you'd also like, which is not an unusual name that I'm called. Um, this document talks about um, how to support young children and um, also adults around types of anxieties um, around hygiene. Now, um, many of this, is sometimes referred to as what we call obsessive characteristics um, or obsessive symptoms. I don't tend to call it obsessive compulsive um, because I think a lot of these don't necessarily lie within that diagnosis. Sometimes actually young people display these even without a working diagnosis, even if we've never seen obsessive type behaviours before. So just to take you through some of these, um, these go across both home and school of course. But there will also be a massive um, push at the moment on people washing their hands. Now, for many young children who are um, currently very anxious around hygiene or excessive just around elements of whether or not we're more subtle with them. So you'll see here that I've, uh, that I've mentioned about our own hygiene practices here. So should they be visible or more subtle? Because for some children, they will need to see that visible reassurance and that's okay. But for, for others, that might actually cause them further anxiety. So that might be something that you might have to work engage with. The other thing as well is that if you have teenagers, we all know that social media is a battleground anyway. At the moment, it is a way for people to connect. So the rules and the, and the shift is somewhat changing when people are on their phones, obviously for a lot longer um, than they might otherwise be, perhaps if they were in school or different routines. Some of you, of course, may see no change in the amount of time that they're on the phone as well. So one of the suggestions that I put forward is that obviously the, the news and, and, the, um, and the amount of things that are coming forward for us at the moment, it can seem very overwhelming. So one of the things that we can do is instead of banning social media, maybe we can teach people how to mute keywords. So for example, if you're on, if people are on Twitter or if they're um, putting words into search files, there are tools that you can use via social media 
um, to mute words. So it might be a good idea, perhaps, for your teams to teach your teams how to mute the word coronavirus, and um, so that they that it's not coming up on their on their news feed um, as regularly. It's something that you can navigate with them. But I think muting is is not is is one that we don't necessarily always talk about because a lot of people still need that connection right now. So muting might be the way forward. Another thing to think about as well is, is use of bathrooms. Now, obviously, not all of us, I certainly have, I've got one bathroom in my house, which is, is a challenge in itself. So not everybody will have um, the ability to use different bathrooms. So how this might work out in your home might be different to how it works at your school. So bathroom hygiene may be a particular concern for young people at the moment. So again, thinking about if it's visible or if it's more subtle might be a good idea. But also, if they're going into a school setting, I mean, they're particularly anxious maybe about other children using the bathroom and worries and concerns around that. It might be appropriate for you to have conversations with the school itself and the staff there to talk about whether or not it might be possible for them to maybe use a bathroom which isn't as universally accessible, which may, if they possibly can, of course, because we know that there's a huge strain on staff at the moment, but it may be appropriate for you to think about um, if it's possible for them to use another toilet or another facility which isn't as widely accessed as maybe um, some of the other main bathrooms. For children who are particularly worried about things getting on their clothes, it might be an idea maybe at the moment to think about packing maybe some spare clothing for younger children and um, more for teenagers who are experiencing a lot of anxiety around hygiene too. If, if they're touched in any way or if, or if there's um, something which gets onto their clothes, that might cause them quite, quite a significant amount of anxiety throughout the day. So might you need to pack some spare clothing? It's again, it's not a definite, it's just a suggestion and a thought. There's a lot of um, concerns around um, pets at the moment. So a lot of um, young children are saying, you know, they're worried about being around pets. So again, it's just reassuring and say, actually, do they consider these pets or animals in your home? Or even they might be in school, for example, if they've got therapy dogs, do they consider them a risk? So we, again, have to have a conversation maybe. It'd be a good idea to just explain, obviously, um, that the type of pets that we, that we have can't necessarily transmit um, uh, COVID and coronavirus. So just have that conversation. It might be, it might be wise to just maybe think about whether you see any heightened anxiety around animals at the time. The other thing to think about as well, I mean, um, I've put some other things on here, but I'm just going to go on to specific hygiene ones um, rather than the generalised ones. Um, is, is there an opportunity for them to have their own sanitizer, their own soap maybe, or their own specific place to store that? And if they've got to go into school at the moment, or if they are going, um, uh, you know, if they have to be um, taken into to childcare facilities, then it's really important that we think about maybe their own possibilities for having their own things with them. Um, so that we can just ensure that, again, the, the anxiety is restricted um, and, and lessened around that particular area. In terms of surfaces, you know, they might have to take books to lean on stuff. So again, it's thinking about whether or not we're, we're visible in our hygiene practices. It might be the case that they might, for example, need just a bit of cloth underneath their book, for example. Or if you don't normally have a tablecloth and they're particularly concerned about surfaces, that might be an idea to just put something temporarily over there, or it might even be a tray. You know, use what you've got. Don't go out and necessarily buy something with the current restrictions. Use whatever you can. Um, you know, we used to be very creative as, as prosper and um, as doctor carers, so I'm sure that you will know what is best there. Also think about, you know, they might need to clean the fidget toys. So if they regularly use something, they might be concerned about if it drops on the floor or somebody else touches it. So again, thinking about whether or not they can use one of those things um, at the time. Also, just another thing to think about is that, you know, if they are really anxious about other people touching things, maybe actually communicating to staff. Um, if they ask for going to school or maybe thinking about in the home whether or not they need to get their own uh, their own thing. So I'm not saying that we necessarily, you know, allow them to go into, you know, the uh, cutlery drawers. Um, and to you know, get their own stuff out there. What I am saying is that maybe we can use for instance, they can get their own like, accessible plates on the site, for example. So thinking about how we can adapt our routines around anxiety might be a really good idea um, there. Lastly, we are all washing our hands a little bit more. Yeah, so for people who are um, regularly washing their hands throughout the day, you know, it's a great practice, it's very, very important for us at the moment. But some children may be excessively washing their hands and scrubbing quite quite a lot as well. So just notice the impact maybe on their hands and maybe encourage them to use general hand care in terms of moisturising and other, and other products that they may possibly have access to at that moment in time. So that's the hygiene um, angle covered. Um, and I know that many of you, that might be appropriate. For some, you might not have any of that. So um, for more generalised anxiety, this is something that I'm going to share with you now. So excuse me again, just whilst I go on to the page. Okay, I'm hoping that you can all see this now. So this is what we call anxiety cycling, okay? So I'm just going to zoom out slightly. 
um, just so that I can, oh, I don't need to zoom out, look, I can go down. Um, I'm not very good at technology normally, so this is all quite new. Um, this is um, a tool which has um, been created by the wonderful Sally Russell, and it's used to understand um, predictable patterns in anxiety. So we all know, for example, that anxiety can shift, okay, so it doesn't stay in one place. So you might see here, for example, that there are some cycles that are familiar to you and that you see play out in some of your um, young people. So it starts off with talking about what they find it hard to originally and then what anxiety shifts into different areas. So you can see the cycle there. I find it hard to get up in the morning. I find it hard to get up in the morning. I tend to do things like um, pretend I haven't heard an instruction. And then what I can do depends on um, whether uh, the way that I'm asked, whether or not I need to be on time, boundaries, demands, etc. And then not being able to do things means I'm more likely to um, you know, fiddle or distract myself by focusing on my interests, all of those different things. And then that then results in me being um, feeling more unwell, getting more tired, or maybe becoming agitated. So what it's not doing is boxing people into specific areas. So this isn't the purpose of this tool. Um, and this is entirely editable as well. So we'll send this to you in a Word document format so that you can put your own things in there. This isn't an exhaustive list. Normally what I do is I ask people to leave these blank Okay, you can see they've taken all of that out. Um, we normally ask them to leave it blank and then for you to fill it in from there, whether it's by hand, whether it's on the computer. Um, so it's just, but those are some suggestions I've put in there, okay, just to get people started off. This isn't, again, for you to say, right, well, this is exactly how it plays out, because as we know, it's very unpredictable. What it is useful in doing is trying to figure out what common cycles you might see, especially when they're in the home a lot more. This is something which I know a lot of people are struggling with, with new routines um, and new things happening. It might be very difficult for us at the moment to try and um, enforce some of those boundaries and, and to think about where we place our demands and requests because we are essentially sometimes going to be at the moment maybe the only adult that they're going to communicate with all day. So we don't have the reliance on other um, adults, maybe within the family, um, maybe it's older siblings, maybe it's um, teachers, um, other, other significant adults that sometimes in our child's, uh, children's lives. We don't necessarily have that reliance at the moment. So it's trying to figure out where we place our demands and how we ask children those things. Not to say we don't, um, we don't just enforce boundaries and that we don't still keep them safe and all of those things. But this is a really good tool to use to understand where those significant demands might be difficult um, and also where the predictable patterns might lie. So I hope that makes sense to you and I hope that's um, somewhat useful for you. Um, and that can be also not just about identifying specific patterns, but that might also be um, just, just a way for you to keep note of certain things that you're seeing, and to just keep on top of certain behaviours, um, because they don't always follow a pattern, as, as we say. The last thing I'm going to share with you, um, and I hope I haven't talked too quickly, um, I am Welsh, so I do get ahead of myself and, and tend to talk quite quick, but I have to slow myself down. Um, I've also noticed as well, I tried to tidy my room, um, my living room earlier, and you can see that there is a cushion, which I haven't quite put in the right place. So that's, that's, that's my um, uh, set of elements of anxiety coming out there. So I'm going to share with you one last resource, which I'm hoping might be useful for you. And that is, um, excuse me, just whilst I um, go on to the website, that is, excuse me again, Okay, so I'm trying to get to the tab. So this is, and that is an absolute pain to have those two there. Excuse me, just whilst I close those. Okay, so this is what we need. So um, this website um, is something that we've just put together for um, the NHS. So this is NHS funded, and it's for not just um, young people, but it's also for adults as well. Um, We've designed it purposely for people who might not necessarily have access to huge amounts of resources, who might not have access to huge amounts of technology. And um, I think sometimes some of the suggestions and the resources that we put forward presume that people have loads of garden space or have loads of spare space in the house um, who have you know, a, a money that is dispensable. And you know, we know, are very well aware that the majority of people don't necessarily have that. So this resource is, is specifically for and um, people who are finding it difficult to cope at the moment and just generally trying to stay on top of things day to day. So if you go to www.learn.formentalhealth.com, again, I'll include this in all your notes for you, okay? So I'm just going to take you through the resource 
I'll include the website so that you can see it. So when you get onto the landing page, okay, so this is the site you'll be taken to. You know, we've purposely chosen some really calming images that aren't specific at all. If you click on this link here, okay, what it will do is it will take you through to this page. So here are the three main features that I want to show you. So if you go to how you are feeling right now, this will give you um, an idea of where we are and you can slide the scale as you can see and it will signpost you according to how you're feeling the different areas. Okay, so it will give you the links then for you to go to. Now, you don't have to do this. You can just go straight back to the menu. It doesn't need to be that you do that um, straight away. You can just go straight on the wellbeing plan and the 3330 approach, which are the two main features of this specific site. So what is hoped is that eventually, if you need something practical, you can come back with, um, if you go on to the, the, well, the wellbeing plan tab, it will take you through to this. Okay, and this is the wellbeing plan which gives you the 3330 uh, approach, which I'll show you in a second. But this is just a format for you to get some ideas down. Um, it might be the case that you maybe need to do this for yourself, for other family members. It's not just for young people, it could be for both. So it's really key that we, we focus on that because I know that at the moment, you know, uh, I, I know for sure that many foster carers um, can, can struggle with with feeling isolated as it is, and adoptive carers and kinship carers, you know, it, it, can, it can be difficult sometimes for people to understand our families and the, and the way that we live and the way that we sometimes work. So it's not the case, I think, that people are, um, this is somewhat new um, in terms of feeling maybe a little bit isolated, but I think it may be excessively isolated at the moment, but specifically for, for all of you. So I wanted to make sure that I showed you this, and don't be afraid to go away and think about this for yourself, because Again, the reason that we've chosen the 3330 approach is that not everybody has 30 minutes themselves. Not everybody has that. Some of us normally have about 30 seconds or maybe even a couple of minutes, which is where maybe the 30 and 3 may be very useful for you. So let me take you on to the uh, 3330 approach. So on the landing, um, on the home page here, if you go on to that tab, it gives you again the three areas that you can use. So the three areas that you can use are the 30 seconds of three minutes and the 30. So if you click on each of them at a time, what it does is it gives you some suggestions, okay? And then if you click on the photo um, the arrow there, it also takes you to more, okay? Now, some of these, again, are, some of them targeted a little bit at young people, some of them targeted more at adults. So we're trying to use basically really simple stuff that you might have at your grasp. So, for instance, what we talk about is the emergency reboot. So some so things that you can do almost anywhere, almost anytime. So just things you've got 30 seconds to do. You just need to take a breath. You just need to be able to take a moment to be able to just ground yourself, to just calm yourself, to just feel on top of things again. One of the one of the really good things to use um, for young children, especially at the moment, especially um, those who hold a lot of attention, is what we call um, aggressive muscle relaxation, so PMR. Now this works at holding and tensing certain um, areas of your body, large muscle groups. So it might be in your wrists, it might be in your arms. You'll see here I've got full tension lock and maybe got my shoulders up as well. And the way that this works is that you tense it for a period of time and then you release it afterwards. And then the release then is, hope, um, is, is proven to then release excessive tension that you may be holding within your body. So the young people that are specifically very active and highly activated much of the time, the PMR stuff is really good to use and work with too. If you have apps like Spotify or you can go online um, and you can find some PMR routines as well. Um, and you can even use some scripts. Um, there's some um, sort of guided um, sounds and meditations that you can use for those as well. And they will talk you through how to use that. And it might be that they use that in there um, with their headphones maybe rather than you leading it. So those are the 30 seconds ones, okay? And then if you go back to the menu, um, and you go back to the 3.30 approach, um, you've got then the three minute ones. So on the three minute ones and the 30 second ones, again, remembering, so there's some links here to some box breathing. So if you click on this, this will take you to um, some breathing exercises that you can do and it'll take you to a link here and a video that you can use for box breathing, okay? And um, there's also the grinding technique that you can use there, okay? And there's also, um, some good ideas for you to think about, both in terms of mind and both in terms of body. So these are the three-minute ones. And again, 
It takes you on some very things that you have. One thing I would suggest that you use in this um, is the ability for smells for grounding. So um, I use, for example, um, I suggest a lot of people use peppermint oil um, for, um, uh, for anxiety attacks and when you're feeling highly anxious. Now I'm not talking about you know, drinking peppermint oil or plastering yourself in it, but the smell of it works for the hypothalamus very well. And um, because what it does is it shocks our system and it brings us back present um, and, and it can have a very soothing effect. So I'm not saying that we work for everybody, but for many people that does work well with. So utilizing those things, maybe if you've already got some of those um, lying around, smelling salt, for example, we have to be very careful about smelling because of course we know that but just again, some simple practical things that you can use. Um, utilize pets and animals, you know, if you've got them. Um, I know that many of us are, are walking our animals <laughs> excessively at the moment. I've got a 17-year-old dog and um, he's he's not enjoying the, the hour-long walk every <laughs> single day. He's used to sleep in quite a lot. Um, so again, there's some there's some lots of different things in there. Um, Humour is a good one. I try and use as many jokes as possible at the moment, even if they are horrendously bad. And many of you will um, one know perhaps that my jokes are um, uh, very, very poor, but I find them funny, so it doesn't matter. Okay, and then there's some also, um, so there's some 30, 30 minutes ones here. Now, there's links again for other stuff that you can do, there's some ideas, um, and there's also, if you go on to chatterpack.net, chatterpack.net have a huge amount of resources in terms of online learning resources for school-based work that you can do at home, but also some advice and some resources around special educational needs and also social and emotional mental health. So loads of links of stuff that you can do there as well, and it puts them into categories as well, eat and drink, entertain. There's loads of ideas that you can use in there. And again, this is both for young people, but also for carers too. So the one feature I want to show you on this website as well is that if there is any children that you're supporting at the moment that are in significant amounts of distress, or if you yourself are finding things very, very difficult, at the top of this website, in the top right-hand corner, is the Need Help Now button. And another website that we've developed over the last couple of years is what we call www.stainsafe.net. Now, this website is specifically for people who might be finding things very, very challenging right now. But there's a range of helplines that you can use there if you need to get in touch with somebody. And this is specifically for people who are experiencing maybe fleeting and existing or quite significant thoughts around some type of self-harm. So if you, on this website, what it does give you on the safety plan tab is it gives you the ability to complete what we call a safety plan. So this is something which we use in services. It doesn't have to be used by clinicians, okay? But this is something which gives you all the guidance videos that you can go through on there um, uh, to, to understand. So in the introduction page, um, and in the resources, it gives you all of the resources and training materials so that you know what it is we're talking about here. So just to give you a very, very quick um, introduction, I'm not going to spend more than 30 seconds on this. Um, basically, you can input in here all the different things. Just to type it in there, um, some ideas for getting through right now. And if you hover over these and click these, then it gives you some suggestions that you can also put in here as well. Okay, so it's not just I'm completely led by you. There's some ideas there for you too, but it has to be co-produced. This is really important that your own ideas are in there. And then eventually what happens is that you can then download that PDF. Um, and what happens is that every time you close the box, your input stays in there. Okay, so you can go back to it at any time. So if I just put some more input in here, what will happen is that eventually when I finish all of those things, I download the PDF and I'm going to open the PDF now so that you can see the template. Um, oh, well, that didn't work, did it? <laughs> Let me try that again, see if it works again. I'm not sure it will for you whilst I'm on here. Apologies for that. But anyway, what basically happens is that you can then go in and access that. You can download it um, once you've completed it. So you can have that on your phone and you can um, have that to print out. Um, you can also just save it to your computer as well. But you can go on again and make another one um, and update it if you need to too. So I hope that's been useful for you. I know I've taken you through a lot in a very short space of time, but I just wanted to make sure you had something practical to take away because it's one thing, you know, we're random Welsh back and talking on a webcam to you, but it's another thing to fully understand um, and have something practical to follow up with as well. That's all from me. Um, I'm sorry to have given you a whistle stop for in a very short space of time, but I want to try and make it compact so it was manageable because I know that we don't always have a huge amount of time to sit down and do these things. I'm wishing you all well, and I'm hoping that you're all staying safe and um, looking after one another. 
use existing networks if you've got them. There are some numbers on there that you can call as well. And I know the local authorities are also putting in place some forums for carers um, and um, kinship carers, adoptive carers, all of those different things. So fall back on your peers um, and also get in touch if you have any more questions. We can certainly follow up with that if, if you have any more. I hope you're all okay. Take good care. Um, and I hope that this has been useful for you all. Sending lots of love to you all. Take care.